hard throwing righty, 6-7 man himself. Johnny Stevenson, the catcher, will come to bat with no outs still. As he rips that one off, Jalen Thompson's cleat, luckily, in foul territory, so that will not be an out. That's why the batters it, what stay it, there. What is this? Was it his cleat, his ankle? Well, definitely hit his cleat because he's walking fine. Yeah. If that was his ankle, he would have been limping a little, I would assume. And he showed Grant Ashline asked where he hit it. It looked like the, the the top, the tip of the cleat, which has the most padding. That's probably why he didn't feel it. It's going to hit anywhere. It's a good place. Still. Either way, it's a very awkward strike one for Johnny Stevenson. And the 0-1. Curveball. Missed high for ball. One. It's almost like there's a magnet around the strike zone for uh, the candy right now. Everything seems to be just missing everywhere, up, down, left, and right. The 1-1. One, one. And that one's in the dirt. Gets by Corbin. Jalen Thompson on the way home. He's going to be in there. And a very awkward slide knocked down Sakani, but Sakani was over the plate, so he kind of asked for it. And Morley will move over to third. I'm going to say, I'm not sure what they're going to rule that, whether it's a pass ball or a wild pitch. We'll see. And It was in the dirt. Corbett tried to block it, but it just took a bad hop on him. So the lead is now cut in half. It's now 8-4. And that one's in the dirt as well. So it'll be 3-1 to the count to Johnny Stevenson. That one almost got by. And there's another runner 30 to 90 feet away from scoring. Got another uh, arm warming up in the bullpen. Burks Norton. Sidearm. And 3-1. That ball is crushed. Deep to left field, but it will be foul. Stevenson got every last bit of that one, but just too much out in front. And he's a little... He's upset that wasn't fair. I think saying this is a, a bad half inning for Sakani would be an understatement here. He's, he's, he's missing around the zone, and then when he gets it in, he's leaving it over the plate for the that payoff hit. pitch. Is crushed. Dolan's there. He will tag. The throw home is not in time. And they're going to say he left early. And he didn't. So. It'll be 8-5 to five now. Claflin only trails by three. The bases are now cleared, and, and there's only one out. Sack for Johnny. Nice job. This is the most offense we've seen from Claflin in an inning in this entire series. They've scored five runs the first game in the entire game and six the entire second. They've scored four in this inning alone. And that ball is crushed deep to left. Back goes Dolan, and it, you can forget about it. That is gone. Christopher Gilliam, a solo blast as if it could get any worse in this inning. And the lead is now cut to only two. It's eight to six, Tars. As Claflin is finding their bats, that ball was hammered. Got a feel for Isaiah Sakani here. He had a good few innings to begin the game. And then you come in in the bottom, at the top of the fourth inning, and it all, it all just goes awry for you. As a show, he's going to come out here to talk with Sakani. Wendell, his, his day might be done. Wendell Ferguson will have his first at bat with nobody on, and there's going to be one out. Yeah, that's it. Going to be Brooks Norton entering the game for the Tars. Just an entire collapse. Only two earned runs for Sakani in all of that. Three and a third, four hits, six runs, two earned, two walks, four strikeouts. In 
64 pitches. So getting to know Birch Norton, side sidewinder. He's done exceptionally well this year coming in in relief appearances. And as he warms up, we will give him some time and we'll be right back with the action sticking here in the top of the fourth with one out and nobody on. We'll be right back. So Wendell Ferguson will have his first at-bat with nobody on. This will be his first real at-bat. The last time it was a sacrifice bunt, so it doesn't count. And first pitch to him from Brooks Norton is a strike one. And the 0-1 to Ferguson. Swing and a miss. And the count will go quickly 0-2. Now keep in mind, Ferguson is a pitcher, and he's not listed as a position player. Here's the 0-2, and that one is hit to Ashline, and they'll throw him out for the second out of the inning. That looked like a, a pitcher's at bat right there. Not to generalize or anything, but you can tell Wendell Ferguson's not much of a... A hitter on most days. Yeah, he's a junior pitcher is what they have him listed at. Nothing nothing else. And like we mentioned yesterday, 137 pitches in game one of this series. And Norton gets the first pitch for a strike to the leadoff batter, Jesse Minter. And the 0-1. And that one's going to be way for ball one. The count will go even. Brad Case has sat down over in the uh, in the bullpen area. Well, they wanted to get Brooks up because they needed somebody to get hot quickly. Sidearms can do that. Nice swing and a miss. Now it's going to be one and two to Minter. Case will probably be for later, I would assume. Mm. Him and his buddy Whit Grennan, 6'7 and 6'6. Six, six. The one, two. And that one's popped up to the left side. Norton, Corbett, and Ashline all going over to it. Corbett takes control. Ashline was afraid he was going to trip on Corbett's mask. But either way, that will end the inning. So as we head to the bottom of the fourth, a five-run inning for Claflin will make it eight to six Tars. As it looks like we'll have a new pitcher for Claflin, I believe. 